Hello, my name is Mark Anthony Dubose Jr. And I was born July 4th, 1986. I'm standing in front of a front door. Front door is something that I think is very, very, very vital for a dog to really understand something that we're looking for from them. You know, I say to get your dogs to be nice and calm. I think that that's the number one thing that we as dog owners should really be able to get, come to understand about working with, with any sort of dog, any sort of animal, is to get them to be in a calm state. A calm state, you're able to actually finally, efficiently, and effectively communicate to that animal. But if the dog is just all excited and all running around, jumping and going crazy and just being, being absolutely savage, you, you're not really going to have any sort of com uh, communication with that animal at all. And it's something that is just, I'm going to say, is super, super backwards with what it is that we do today, with bringing out toys and bringing out treats. And we get the dog in this extremely heightened, excitable state. And this excitable state is not something that we would ever want our dogs to actually be in because we realize when we're just hanging out in the house and watching a movie and, and watching some TV or just hanging with the family, eating dinner, you want the dog to, to relax. You don't want the dog to be on edge, just on edge all the time, just go, 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 go. That is just, that's why I'm going to say that majority of what I'm going to say is what's considered dog training today is 100% backwards. It is just completely backwards to the point that it's backwards in a way that it's actually starting to frustrate you in a way that you're really not getting any sort of success because your dog doesn't even understand the frustration that you had. So the first thing that we need to do is get the dogs to be calm. And, and I like to start that right away inside of the house. Right in front of the house, I just like to be right in front of, hey, uh, or, oh, we're good. Right in front of the house and, and, and just right, right, right in front of the front door. You know, the back door, the in the house, there, there's something about that. But there's something about this, this area right here, especially when you first put the leash on the dog. Because the dog is just like, we're about to go somewhere. We're about to do something. We're about to make something happen. Something, something about to go down. We're about to go for a walk. We're going to go run. We're going to go play. We're going we're gonna to go make something happen. So it's, it's for me to, to really bring the dogs into this situation here and to just get them to be able to get into a calm state. They need to be able to see this door open and just be able to stay and be able to hang out. This is one stage that I would spend a lot of time on before I try to go anywhere else. A lot of us are so quick to let's go for a walk around the block. You may be ready. You've been doing that your whole life, but your dog's not ready yet. And I don't care how long you've had the dog, where the dog came from. I don't care if the dog, you put the leash on, you had even a good walk one time. You, you still want to just take it back. Take it back a couple of steps to get to the point of realizing that my dog is going to be good to go. And the first step that I'm going to say is you should be able to open this door and the dog be able to stay here. And it's best to put that leash on that dog up front to just give them that guidance so they, so they don't mess up. So if they mess up, you just pull them back in. You just say, come back inside and wait. You don't want them to be in an excitable state before you take that step out that door. You want to just, just hang out and just stay and just relax a moment. Make sure that the dog is able to just stand and just be. Just be in the presence of realizing that I can see the world. Something that I've just really have come to realize with working with a lot of these dogs is there's something about doorways and especially the front door. It's like some sort of portal type thing that they're looking out there and they get out of it and it's just that it's like they were they're all right and then they get out and then it's just it's absolutely maddening. It's, they just go crazy. And some dogs actually even stop. They like look at the door and they're just like, what, what the heck is going on here? So they hesitate as if there is something that's going on. And there's one thing that I do know that is very, very powerful with dogs is when they go out first, they're in control. When we go out first, we're in control. Not in the control of the sense of, again, you're a dictator and can demand and just force and, and, and treat the animal as if it should just do what you want. No, in reality, the walk when we're going to go outside is going to be something for both of us to do. And, and for most cases, and some people, this is the part where I'm going to say it's unfortunate if you look at your dog in a situation like this as taking a dog for a walk is like work for you. And, and, it's, and it's just, it's, 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 it's like you, you just get frustrated with it. And, and if that's the case, you have that dog, then for one, I would say, I, I'm, I'm going to beg of you to get your dog to be able to walk better because when they walk really good, it's an actually enjoyable walk. But it's not only just about the dog and it's not only just about you. It's about the experience for both of y'all to really start to be able to bond, to be able to build a relationship and be able to work with each other. And once you're able to start getting to that point that you're working together, I'm telling you, that's when things get fun. But the number one way that we are able to start to get to work together is to be able to get the dog to be able to get into a calm state. And a calm state is the number one thing that we should all be focusing upon. Not bringing that treat out to get that dog jazzed up to get going. I'm telling you, you, you are not going to like that in the future. You're going to get more and more frustrated with what it is that you keep seeing going on inside your household. You want to convince the dog to get calm. The first time you get to the door and you're standing here with a dog looking at this, at this front door, they're going to go, they're going to go, they're going to go. And I'm just surprised. You know, I've been working with these guys for a little bit today and uh, already realizing that they could just stay here. This little boy, he's getting a little excited because the dogs out there are playing. They're out there playing, running, doing what they're doing, and he's just looking at that like, I want to be a part of that. But yet he still has it in him of, I'm not going to be able to get into that if I'm in this excitable state. He's got to wait. He's got to hang out. And it's something that is just very, very powerful about getting the dogs to be able to just finally be able to relax. That that's when they're going to look at you and say, okay, well, what are we going to do now? Because now I can hear you. Now I see you. Now I understand you. Now I know what you're looking for from me. And that's, that's the start of being able to build that relationship that you're actually looking for, to be able to get into, into that training. 
Again, we're so quick to go into like, we're going to train, we're going to this, we're going to this, as opposed to, to just getting into that dog's brain of just, how, how are you doing today? How are things, how, how are you? You, you? you stomach upset? You feeling all right? You ready to do this? You ready to make things happen? And someone may say, well, that's silly to talk about that about a dog, but that's something that we all should really start to focus a little more of our time and en energy on, not just thinking that it's just some some little in insignificant being that just doesn't feel, doesn't doesn't have any emotions, it doesn't act, it, it, it just does. And that's not what they do. They they do understand a, a wide variety of, of, of emotions that goes on inside of them. It's something that we should be very, very, paying very close attention to what's going on with them. Not just assuming that everything is good and assuming that this, assuming that. No, we have to start to pay more attention. And especially if the dog is in a very, very high excitable state, we got to be able to get that dog to be able to calm down. And this, and, and it's just something that's, that's that that again I'm going to say is very interesting that I just noticed because especially yesterday I just had this like this look at a situation where I'm just like I see why people just just quit with using a specific a specific type of leash and that leash being of the slip collar. Or the slip leash, whatever style you use. I use a slip leash. So I, I put the slip leash on the dog. But you always say to me, oh, my dog is choking. That's why I don't use it. So I stopped using it because I don't want the dog to choke. So then I put the harness on the dog. So, and then you realize like, hey, actually nothing is actually getting any better here. And, and things are actually kind of getting worse right now. So I don't know what to do because when I put that one on, the dog is choking. There's something that I've just really come to realize. It's just yesterday was just like a, like a blow up my aha moment. The dog chokes when it's in an excitable state and it's go, 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 go. We can't communicate on their neck anymore because they're holding so much tension, so much pressure in their neck, in their entire body. They're just like, I'm, I'm ready to go, I'm ready to make something happen. They just have all this amount of tension inside of them and, it's, and, it, and they don't really, they don't, they don't want to give into that leash. But when they're calm, I can, I can maneuver this dog with ease, with ease. She's like, I'm not going to move right there. She just, she'll move with ease when they're calm. But when they're excitable, you have to use like so much pressure. You got to like pull on that leash so hard. You got you to gotta really give it a good snap. But when the dog is already chill, it's just a, it's just a light little motion. And the dog's like, oh, okay, I know what you're looking for. I know what's happening. And that's where a majority of people are messing up right away with putting the leash on the dog and expecting them to do something when they're in a highly excitable state. They're not going to do what you're looking for. For one, they're just they're confused because they're in that high excitable state. And we need to be able to bring them down to get them to be calm. And the only way to do that is just to stand and be completely neutral. Just be neutral. I would stand here for two hours with my dog and just have the door open, have him look outside and me be neutral, knowing that the, it, everything is OK. It may be exciting out there, but to be able to calm them down so that they can realize that, hey, things are all right. Everything is, is going to be OK here. And then as soon as I take a step forward, cause he's, he's already like, I'm just going to lay down and hang out a moment. And then I come out here and go ahead and take a step and to come out here. And then I would still stay right here. I wouldn't go anywhere. I would stay right here to make sure the dogs are good to go because you see they're, they're, they're taking a little more of the leash. They're, they're going a little bit further, so I'll guide them to bring them back a little bit closer to me and say, hey, come, come back over here. Come back over here and just stay and hang out right here. I would spend a lot of time on just going in and out right here to make sure that they can stay in a completely calm state. This is stuff that for, for, for any and every single person, you can get this done. It, 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 the, the, the trainer that comes in should be able to do something like this in a matter of minutes to seconds. But for every single one of us that has a dog, this is time that you would spend that I would want you to spend with your dog to build a relationship, to teach them, to guide them, and just spend a lot of time on just the front door, walking in and out, in and out, in and out. In and out, in and out, in and out. And if you're worried, oh my goodness, I'm going to get a fly in my house or something. Set up some fly traps and just go in and out, in and out, in and out. Your electric bill is going to be two bucks more this month because now it's going to run more AC or more heat. Just go, just stay in here and just be. Just stay in here so that the dogs can get a good experience with realizing what's happening here without getting into this excitable state. Because I know a lot of dogs, when you, when you think of go walk to the door to go get a leash, to get a collar, to get a harness, to get anything, the dogs get so excited. And you want to be able to bring them down. Like, it's not that serious, guys. Like, we're, we're going for a walk. It, it's not like, it, it, it's, the, the work, it, it, it's a great thing, but it, it shouldn't be like a, a, on a 10 scale. We should be excited about a three or a four that's very, very manageable. And then we should be able to go on a walk and be able to hang and be able to relax. That's when the dog is going to experience the best things ever in life because they're able to be able to see the world as opposed to just being frantic. Most dogs that are pulling on a leash are at ex extremely frantic. They're just going here, going here, going here, going here. They're trying to sniff this, sniff this, sniff this, sniff this. this, 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 this. <laughs> Don't worry about them. Uh, they're trying to sniff everything and they're just they're, they're not able to process anything that's going on. They're just like they're on the go, 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 go. As opposed to just like being able to walk and be able to look at the world like, wow, 
This is this is a really nice place. This is this is an awesome place to be around. This is an awesome place to be. Instead of that's what you want your dog to be able to experience, and that's going to be a nice, happy, successful dog that is just nice and relaxed and chill to be able to just experience the world, as opposed to being in the world. Being in the world is hard. It's stressful. It's 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 very very challenging. That's something that I can say is being a child compared to being on your own doing what you're doing. Being a child is very very stressful because you have somebody telling you where to go, what to do, how to do, how to be, how to how to everything. You just can't manage your own self. When you get older, to be able to do that all on your own, you realize like there's some there's a lot of beautiful things in this planet because I could do what I want at this moment. I can go over there if I want this moment. I could raise some dogs if I wanted to. I could raise some chickens. I could do whatever the heck I feel like I I want to do with no limitations and no no restrictions upon me. And if you happen to live in a country where that's not able for you, I'm unfortunate for you to live in a situation that I hope to be a person in, in the future sometime and make sure that the entire world is able to set up to be able to do what you want to do, be able to have what you want to be able to have. And we all have that availability at the end of the day in reality with being able to just move to where you want to go to be able to be somewhere. But it's something that is, is a beautiful thing when you're finally calm out, uh, outside of someone being that dictator to you telling you what you have to have to have to and you can finally be able to do what you want. That's an amazing thing. And a lot of times the dogs are living under that rule of that dictatorship of you're telling them to do, 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 do this. And they're just like, man, what the heck? I don't I, I don't have any freedom and availability to do anything. And that's why they're so stressed out. That's why they're so anxious. That's why they're so nervous. That's why they're just so pushy with everything because they're not sure what to do. And when you take them out on that walk, they're like, I got to do everything possible right now because I'm not going to get another chance to be able to do so. So they're just like they're on that go of like trying to be absolutely savage. And that's not what we want our dogs to be. We want our dogs to be very, very re relaxed, very, very neutral, very, very calm. And the one way to get them to be very calm is for you to start to explain that to them with by doing nothing at all with them. I'm, it's, it's, it's so confusing that, that someone would say, oh, I need to train my dog. I need to this, this. No, to train your dog, you need to do nothing. You need to just put them on the leash and just do absolutely nothing. Just hang out with them. Just relax with them. Just just not even really even look at them at first. Don't even really give them too much affection, too much attention at first. Just be there for them. Be there with them. And that, then they're going to finally start to come to you and start to give you more and more affection. They're going to start to come to you and start to be just a, a much nicer dog. And something that's interesting with both of these dogs, because they both love to just bark at dogs like crazy. But just being here a couple of days, they've already just completely have letting that go. And now it's, I'm going to take them somewhere else and just, just stuff that I've been adding and working with them. So take them other places to realize that it's more likely going to be the exact same experience because we're just I'm, I'm giving them the feedback of do nothing, guys. Stop reacting because the first thing we do when they react is pull on that leash, pull on that leash, touch them, touch them, hold them. You got some you got some slobber on you, girlfriend and touch them and hold them and do all this crazy stuff as opposed to just just hanging out with them and just relaxing with them to give them that feedback of I don't want that. And that's one thing that is, I'm going to say, a beautiful thing about allowing the dog to be able to be off leash in areas so that they can be able to not get that feedback from us of what we're looking for. But they'll actually like bark and look at us and I'm going to look at them like shake my head like, no, I don't want that. And they're like, oh, OK, I understand that. As opposed to using a leash that's really going to start to jam them up. And it's, it's, it's a beautiful thing. That's why I, I, I don't know why we got this stuff with the, the, dog, the dog trainers that are just so against all the dog parks and everything. But that's something that, that it, 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 to me, is almost a vital thing for dogs to be able to be around other dogs. Dogs can treat and, and train and, and teach dogs. They're, they're very, very good at being able to do such a thing. So I love being able to use my dogs to be able to help out others. I got some that are a little more excitable that can help them out. I got some that are just super chill and mellow that can really help them out. And that's something that dogs need. They can, they can learn a lot from me, but they can learn so much more from a dog that's already the way that you want it to be. If you see a dog, you're like, I, I want mine to be like that. Then maybe you should get your dog to get around that dog so they can start to become and to be that as opposed to being what it is and not being able to get the clear communication of what's going on. My dog, Johnny, the big guy down there, he could, he could teach these dogs something in five minutes that I would, it would take me months to be able to teach them how to do such a thing. And he's able to communicate that right away. When these dogs bark at him in his face, he just looks at them like, that's not what we're doing, man. That's not what we're looking for. And he'll, he'll just take it. He'll let you sit, stand there and bark at him. And then he, the dog finally stops, and he's like, okay, that's what we're looking for. And it just transforms the dog so fast. And it's such an a, amazing thing to be able to, to have and be able to be around is, is a dog that already is how you want yours to be so that you can get yours around that to do that. And again, it's to be neutral around into that situation, not be all excited yourself and not be all frustrated and irritated at the same time, but just be somebody there to be able to allow the dog to experience the world for themselves for sometimes. It's, 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 it messes dogs up when we're just always being so on 
top of every little thing. Oh, I'm scared. Oh, I'm this. Oh, I'm that. Because you're scared doesn't mean that your dog is. And then once you're scared, you start to put that language upon your dog and get them to be in that situation where now they have no choice but to be scared because they want to do the best of the best they can for you. And that's when you start to see things that look absolutely dangerous when you go outside and when you're all around and doing what you're doing, uh, being in public with your animals, that things get crazy. But the one thing that we really want to get completely away from is getting the dogs to be in that excitable state. And to get them to be, get out of that excitable state is to just hang out with them. It's just, just to be with them. Not to, let me give her a treat every 15 seconds out of this door. I would never stand here and expect my dog to ever, at some point, just calm down, just, just chill, calm down with bringing treats or toys to try to convince them to come not stay out, go out of this door all the time. When I open this door up, I want them to just be able to stand here and just be able to hang out and just be able to look outside as if like, it's just, it's all good. And you're just not going to get that with a treat because a treat is going to raise them up. It's going to get them to a more heightened state. And then they're always going to be sitting there on this sit anxious wait, like, open the door. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. You don't, you don't want your dog ever like that. How stressful is that? It's like someone giving to you saying to you that uh, uh, if you do this job right, we'll give you this and give you that, and you're just sitting and waiting, sitting and waiting, and, and you didn't get it that time. You're going to be so irritated that you didn't get it. That's where treats get dangerous with a lot of dogs, not some dogs, I'm going to say, because then when you don't give them that treat, they get mad at you, and then they get mad at you to the point that they're going to try to take it from you. Then when they try to take it from you, that's when they start to use their mouth, and they put their mouth on you to take it from you. Then they bite you, and you drop them one time, and now they're going to continue to keep on doing that. And that's the majority of dog training cases that I work. It's the dog biting the owners because they're trying to take something from them because they're not giving it to them fast enough. And once they realize how to be able to do that, it, it, it turns into an absolutely savage, dangerous situation. And that's something that we should do our best to try to stay out of. And the way that we get out of that is by communicating to the dogs to get out of that excitable state. And the only way to get a dog out of that excitable state is by just hanging and stop doing the extra, stop doing too much. And something that I, I, I would just want more and more people to just focus on. One first stage step to start doing is just open your dang on the front door, stand there with your dog on a leash, and just wait. And just wait. And just hang out. And just relax right here. Just, 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 just hang out. She already given up. She's like, I'm just going to wait. I'm going to hang out. He, he's wanting to play with the other dog and just see what's going on. But he has no desire to like, I'm just going to pull through and just go, go and do it. You want your dogs to look exactly like these guys do right here, right now exactly how they are he, he's like i'm gonna i'm gonna push the limits i'm gonna put my feet on that threshold and see how far i can go but i'm i don't care as long as he's chill as long as he's not super excited this is this is a stage one you want to put a leash on your dog in the house at first and then you want to put them in this front door and then you want to step out the front door and then you want to take another step you want them to look exactly how these guys look 100 percent of the time if they're not you went too far too fast take a step back take a step back and take a step back I'm telling you, they're going to get to that point of being calm and then you're going to be able to take a walk around wherever you want to go and they're going to be able to stay in that calm state. It's even like right here. She got it in her of I'm going to I'm going to give a little bark. I'm not sure. I don't know, but I'm not going to give her any feedback. I'm not going to pull on this leash at all to tell her anything. I'm just going to say that that leash being loose means I don't want you to do that no more. Let's just hang out. I don't want to to give her anything to make her think that that's okay. That's where a lot of us are messing up. Does that method work of giving them leash pressure when they, when they bark? Yes. But for the average person, we mess it up every time. We reward and then we discipline at the wrong time every time. And that's why it keeps getting worse and worse and worse. The dog barks, it pulls away, you give it a treat. The dog thinks, if I bark, you're going to give me a treat. So they keep on barking. They'll keep on going. That's, that's where we have to really do our best to come at them completely neutral, completely chill. You, you, you good, Piper? I don't know. He, 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 yes, Johnny. He helped you out. <laughs> Be completely neutral and just chill and just, just absolutely hang out. And that's something that starts with just putting a leash and just putting them slowly and surely to that next stage, that next step. That first stage is right here, is right here, inside of the home, front door open, and just let them look outside and let them hang out. Second step is just take one step outside, come out here. I want to come first, and then I want them to come with me. And now they're, co they're completely in tune with me. They're completely right next to me. They're, they're staying with me. They're, they're not going anywhere. And they're gonna, they understand what the rules are. With this guy here, he's not ready, he's not ready to go still. He, he, he got a little bit of a, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push off, push off, push off. He's got a little bit. So then I would come back again. I'll come right back again and say, hey, dude, you, you tried to go too far. You know, I gave you, I'm giving you two or three feet right now is all I want you to take. But, but you decided that you're going to try to go a little bit to start pulling on my leash. So we got to start back over again. We got to come back here. 
and then he can hang out and just stay. So that's the steps that you just keep on taking. And slowly but surely, day after day after day after day after day, you'll end up being able to get around the block. This is something that I'm telling you, the best dog that you're ever gonna have inside of your home for the longest amount of time is if you just take it slow, take it steady, just be chill. Don't try to put some high expectations on an animal that you don't even put those expectations on yourself, that you're just gonna get all this done over in a weekend. Go slow, the slower you go, the more time you take, the better your dog is gonna be in the overall, the more reliable your dog is gonna be, the more dog is gonna trust you and appreciate you and care about you and really actually truly love you because it's, you're gonna be able to give them clear understanding, clear communication because when they're calm, I'm telling you the pressure on this leash, you don't need much, it's minimal on 100% of dogs. But when they're excitable, yeah, you gotta, you gotta switch it up. You gotta go to a prong, you gotta go to this, you gotta do this, you gotta do that. You don't need all of that if you just slow it down. Now, will I do and use tools like that on dogs? Heck yeah, so that I could speed it up because I could see what's going on with the dog. I could see, I can get him out of the state, make sure I'm not rewarding and make sure I'm not correcting the, the wrong things and I'm on board. But that's where experience of working with a whole bunch of dogs comes in to be able to fast track some things. And that's where I'll say the right trainer can be able to fast track what you want. But you, we ourselves and everyone can do all these basic things to be able to get your dog to be able to get what it is that you're looking for in the end. Just slow down. And a lot of us, I'm telling you, we're, we're trying to do too much too fast. If you just slow it down a pinch, you'll see significant gains in a matter of three to four months that you've just never seen from your dog before. Even if you, you've had them trained, you had them board and trained here, this and this, just, just slow it down. Take it back. Stage one, simple one, of just standing and looking out the door. She's got a little bit of what's going on out there and she's going to stay right there. She's going to hang out right there. She's not going to go anywhere because we've been doing this now for standing here for at least an hour. And she's just like, I'm just, okay, I'll just, I'll just hang out and let me stand here for another hour. And she, they'll just both give up. They'll end up laying down and just relaxing. I say, okay, we're calm. We're super calm when you're all laying down and chill. Now we can go ahead and go on out. And then we'll wait till they chill, calm down, lay down and relax again as soon as I go out. And then a couple of steps. And I'm telling you, you do that and you're gonna have an absolutely amazing dog. It's so simple to work with these dogs, and I think that we as people are overcomplicated, and I think that we as, as uh, dog trainers are really overcomplicating it to the point that making you think that you need them, and, and it's a very, very valuable tool for a dog trainer to do that because that's where money comes involved. And when you can't do it, and your dog is dangerous, and your dog is this, and, and you're teaching your dog things that's conti continually to keep on making your dog dangerous, then you definitely need them. And that's where today's society is really getting, that we, we are classifying dogs as being dangerous and crate. Oh, you stuck, girlfriend. Classifying dogs as being dangerous and, and uh, 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 aggressive when, when they're not. They're just scared in a way that we can work them through that fear. We can work them through those problems and they don't need to stay in that. And that's something that is, in my opinion, required of all of us dog trainers to really start to explain instead of being on this absolute mass level of manipulation that your dog is, is something wrong with them and they're bad and they're, they're gonna hurt somebody and they're gonna kill somebody when that's just not the case at all. That, that is, that is not, the, not the deal with the majority of these dogs out here. They may display disp uh, behaviors as if they are aggressive, but they, they just, they actually truly aren't. And it's fascinating that I could just take the leash and they just understand. I'm inside, they stay inside. The door is open, they're still gonna stay inside because I'm inside. But then as soon as I head on outside, that's when they'll say, okay, maybe, maybe we can go on out. And that's something that just took not even an hour's worth of time here for me to be able to explain to these dogs of what it is that I'm looking for from them. And it's, it, 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 this isn't no years, months, decades. They are staying in the house already. Door being open doesn't mean it come out. It's something that is just super, super basic. Thank you.